Welcome back guys, this is episode 3 of our scale radial engine build. You might recall that in episode 2.5, it was uh, two weeks ago I think now, that we were chasing some surface finish issues and we attributed that to the servo motors that we were using at the time, plus we also had some movement in the MDF table and we went through that and had a look at how that table, uh, how, how I stiffened it up and made it a little bit rigid. However, now, we have made some more rocker pots and we have made some rocker pot covers. Have a look at this beastie. Look at that. An M2. Let's get this in the middle. There you go. M2 threads. And then we go on to our brass. Look at this. How stunning is that? So. How did we get this? So good, man. This is exciting. So we ended up making a our own version of kind of like a weld flat table and we added some legs and stuff to it. We'll jump across and have a look at that in a minute. But one of the other things that we utilized that I didn't really talk about last video was rice bran oil. We were using this as a lubricant, a cutting lubricant. This is a bit of an old welder's trick because it's not petroleum based you can weld through it so it does minimize some of the prep time if, if you're doing some billet works now the other side effect of that is being organic it doesn't give you lung cancer so we're kind of stoked with that one with that we have built our steel table we have machined a fixture plate for the mod vices we've gone through and put the mod vices on and I can tell you, those little vices are amazing. We were hesitant just because of the price with the US dollar exchange and seeing if we could do something with it, but they're second to none. I, yeah, hands down, they are the way to go. So we've been running the Saunders vices on the fixture plate with the steel table. Uh, we've been running a three flute cutter up to two, two and a half, three meters a minute at full, uh, full slotting. And we're getting 0.05 mil backlash in the machine and just getting some unreal finishes, service quality. We're really, really blown away and, and, and just really proud of ourselves for, for doing what we have managed to do on such, a, on such a machine. So I think, let's jump across onto the computer. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a little bit around the CAD and then we'll jump across onto the machine and we can have a look at the table. So we're here inside Fusion. We are looking at the new table. The one we built was out of three mil steel. Now we have gone up to six mil in this design and we're just having a little bit of a fiddle around. So we have the fixture plate itself with the grid for M10 screws. So they're M8.6 uh, holes. The controller mounts on the side of it. We also have chip shoots underneath. So we can run full flood coolant on this and have full recovery of that. Now, here comes the quirky bit. If we unhide some of this stuff. We have really made it, blech, we have made it fully self-contained. This, this, oh man, it's so exciting. We're just, we're so thrilled to have a complete um, clean manufacturing environment for our customers it's oh awestruck we just we just were so surprised we just thought coming into this you know a 10 grand machine what can you expect from a from a sub 10,000 you know kiwi so it's what six grand us um machine and we've just we've blown ourselves away with with the type of of product that we've managed to produce here mixed with all our software suites so we've got all the 3d probing um you know we've got surface mapping just oh it's amazing. So, let's go have a look. The idea of drilling the holes first is that there is plenty of meat there to hold the the stock true. If we tried to do that after we had removed all the material, you might find that the drill walks, so it's just easier to drill it and start with. Uh, and then we've moved on here to the M2 thread mill. Uh, we actually we got this tolerance on the very first try, which was which was pretty impressive.
Now we're just moving on to our Chipex 3 flute cutter. Uh, we're just going to be decking the top of this material. So here we go, we're doing the bore. Well, it's ramping in and then it's gonna do a 2D adaptive. Uh, we're running this at just a little, running this at around 2,700 millimeters a minute as a roughing pass. And that's full slot, depth of cut. 6mm as it goes through that uh, pivot point. And now we're just kissing those walls into tolerance. And the bores for the push rod and for the valve itself. Now we're adaptiving the outside. So this is more of a clearing maneuver. This is where material removal rate comes into play. Here we go, so we've slowed back down again. This is the finishing pass with our spring passes. And we just repeat that with the spring pass. Again, we're gonna do another adaptive clearing procedure on this one. What we've ended up having to do is a two-part work holding so that we could clamp it down. So we're going to machine the front half of this pot and then we're gonna swap the screw from the rear to the front uh, and then we'll continue finishing the, uh, the rear of the part. Now since that's complete, we're just going to drill out the three mounting holes of the rocker pot to mount to the cylinder head. And we'll move through into edge breaking because we are professionals, and that's what professionals apparently do. And here's a little trick. So we're edge breaking the part, uh, we'll slow it down, but because we haven't finished the back, we're just going to put a chamfer straight through the material so that we've pre-edge broken the back. Here we go, so we've swapped the screw from the rear to the front, and we're gonna carry on with our adaptive tool paths.
again, we're just gonna run some spring passes and just face in the top of that uh, push rod hole. And we're gonna edge break again, because we're, we're professionals. This is just the OP2 jig, so this is where we are drilling the mounting hole for the rocker arm, for the little thing. First try, beautiful threads. And we just wanna just check our, our sizing, just make sure that you know we are actually making what we think we're making. And sure enough, 15.5. We're, we're bang on. Oh look, brass! These. These, these, these. These are the rock pot covers. Really impressed, we actually managed to get them one for one on size on the first attempt, so they click perfectly together. Sorry. This one needs some deep burring. Look at that. First, don't have to muck around with it at all. It just clicks straight on there. Perfect sizing. So here we're just using a two mil four flute, four flute, two mil three flute cutter. The Air Force is flying over. the Black Falcons doing formation flying. They did that yesterday as well. We're quite close to Wigram, the old Air Force base, so they like to fly over occasionally and, and promo. But yeah. So we ended up leaving five tabs on the part itself. So I misplaced this one when I put it in the vise, so the top one's missing. However, if I turn this around, you'll see that there's four tabs holding the, the stock remaining in there. So I just clipped those off with a side cutter, um, and then I just filed them in and just used a little bit of sandpaper just to gently bring them back into tolerance. Um, and, it, and it looks really, really good. So. I think we're we're done there, so wait. I've got stuff in the tumbler. Let me come back. Right, so these are sitting in the tumbler, but here's a finished finished lid. And 
and a finished rocker pot. These are gorgeous. Just perfectly. Look at that. Chuffed. Next episode, fourth axis, crankcase. We're on. Bloody good. Right. Courier's here. Good timing. <laughs>